Hi everyone and welcome. On this video, we're setting up price lists in PSA version 3. So, let's jump in the system. So, to get to price lists, we'll click on our navigation on the left and scroll down to settings and to price lists. In PSA, we have three different kinds of price lists. We have a sales price list for the roles that we are selling, for example, consultant, project manager, etc., as well as a cost price list for our roles as well. The third price list that we have is for products. So if we sell, for example, software licenses, we have a price list of its own for our products that we're selling. So let's look at the sales price list first. And for the sake of example, I've already made these price lists in the system. All right, so the first thing that we're choosing is the context of the price list, which in this example is a sales price list. Now, you can set a start and end date for your price list as well. Uh, just make sure that if you do set these and have multiple sales price lists or, or, or multiple cost price, list, uh, price lists, those start and end dates don't overlap. The currency is also chosen when you're setting up your price list as well as the time unit. Under role prices, we can set the prices for our different roles. So here, for example, I have a role of consultant from my default organizational unit priced at 100 per hour. Now, do note that for our US organizational unit, we have a role of developer for a price of 90, whereas for a default organizational unit, we have a role of develop developer for a price of 100. The role, pr uh, the role price markups are a new feature in version 3 of PSA, but for the sake of brevity, we are excluding this from this video and we'll leave this as a subject of its own for, for future vi videos and future articles. Category prices are set up on our sales price list as well. Now, for price calculation, we have a couple of different options. We can price our transaction categories at cost or with price per unit. Now, as we don't really know what our travel costs will actually be and what our miscellaneous costs will actually be, these are in this in this example set to zero when a user is entering expenses from the expense entry they are essentially entering the cost of that expense now at project approval a project approver can set a sales price for that expense if one is desired there is a difference between the at cost and the price per unit. And to show that in more detail, I have a couple of expenses already at project approval. So for our miscellaneous transaction category, which is at cost, if we look at project approvals, we can see that when a user has entered a, an expense for 200, we're automatically getting a matching sales price of 200. Whereas for the travel category, when a user is setting a price of 100 as, as the cost of the expense, we're not getting a sales price because for the travel category, our price list has a price of zero. So do note this when you're making your price list at the at cost and price per unit do behave slightly differently. The priceless items are basically the products that we sell for our role-based price lists. We do not want any priceless items on, on the price list. So the product price list is the place for all, for all our products. Uh, we can set up territory relationships if, if we want to, but they are optional. All right, so looking at this, the cost price list, it looks pretty much the same, so it's made in a context of cost. It does have that currency and that time unit as well. And on this example, I don't have a start and end date set. 
you can set these if you want to. Under role prices, I have those same roles set up for this price list, and I have these cost prices right here. Again, I have that developer for the US and that developer for our default organizational unit. Role price markups are naturally empty on the cost price list as well. For category prices, it's not required to set up category prices for your cost price list, as when you're entering expenses through, an ex through the expense entry, you're, you're entering the cost of that expense, which you will then invoice from the customer if, if you want to get that invoiced. So category prices are optional from a cost price list perspective if you are using expense entries as a means to submit your expenses. And price list items, they're empty here as well as this is a role-based price list. Now, the product price list is fairly straightforward. It is in the context of sales. It is missing that time unit because it's for, for products, as in for uh, pieces in this example. Under price list items, if we have any products that we want to sell, we would add these here. Now, a product price list is needed when you set up a project contract. So a product price list per se must be in the system for you to build your project contracts. You don't have to have any products on that price list if you don't want to, but you do need one price list for products in the system to be able to use project contracts properly. All right, so this was a brief introduction to price lists. If you want more deep dive knowledge, I suggest you read the revised PSA white papers by Microsoft, which were released in the summer of 2018. And you can also check out my video blog covering price lists in more detail. The last thing that we're gonna touch is where should price lists go in the system? So a cost price list should always be associated with an organizational unit so that you have a cost for your, for your resources and your roles under your org unit. So for example, for my default organizational unit, I have that cost price list that we just saw associated with this org unit. Now you can also put price lists under parameters, in which case, when you're setting up project contracts, if you don't have customer specific price lists, a price list from under parameters will be used. And for more information on this, you can, you can check my video blog that I have previously made. So here we can see that under project parameters, we have a cost price list and a sales price list set up. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and have a good one.